Broadway, musical theater. Could have been speaking Greek to a 1986 boy from Washington State. Even so, no one was immune to the power of the Phantom of the Opera. The only Phantom I had ever known was the diabolical disc demon from Decades Record. From Scooby-Doo? But this was a completely different Phantom. No, not that one. Wait, was it? Thanks for joining me in the Gen experience when the mysterious Phantom of the Opera was born, arriving on his own electric guitar riff in a music video with more distinctively 80s vibes than even the show would be known for. I'm Victor, your host, and I was there, wondering if my eyes deceived me watching this crazy ass over the top, even for a soap opera story, unfold on MTV in a music video just over four minutes long. I was all in. How about you? If you saw it or remember trying to catch it during a cycle of videos on the Young Music channel, say it with a like and consider helping me out by pressing subscribe for more great content about growing up Gen X. The video was not a hallucination, but an original creation by Sir Andrew Lloyd Webber when the title song of his upcoming musical became a hit on the charts worldwide. You heard it right, the show had not even debuted, and no one knew what to expect, but it was on its way, like a steamroller without brakes, to crash onto the Broadway scene. Recording the single to measure the public's interest in the new production mere months before the London premiere and two years before opening in the U.S., this single's success on the airwaves, as well as 7- and 12-inch vinyl singles in various countries, including the United States, was all the convincing Weber needed to approve a mini rock opera music video that was produced in one week and used to further the promotion of the soon-to-be legendary production. The London musical premiere was only months away, but nothing is ever finalized on Broadway until previews. However, the story beats were there, and amazingly, a Reader's Digest version of the show's book would be created by Ken Russell, the director for this uniquely original music video for MTV in 1986, almost two years before the Crown Prince of Musical Theatre hit New York City. Russell's vision tells the story, including all the melodrama one has come to expect from a performance of the musical itself in just over four minutes. In Ingenue's big break, her love interest, a secret suitor and tutor, the subterranean lair, the masked man, unrequited love, the debut performance, jealousy and vengeance. Perhaps not all the iconic imagery was present, but if it did not pique your interest for theater, then you're probably dead. While still preparing for the stage musical, the unmistakable diva Sarah Brightman starred as Christine in the video, a role she would continue when Phantom opened on the West End. Steve Harley was used for the single and scene in the video. He was being groomed for the Phantom role, but as development continued, the producers did not believe he could carry the show itself, and days before the cast announcement to the world, Steve was replaced with the incomparable opening Phantom, Michael Crawford. Yeah. This guy from Hello Dolly. Put on your Sunday clothes, there's lots of world out there. Or you may remember him from Wally. It's all coming back to you, isn't it? Randomly catching the video when it came out on MTV, I was completely thrown off. This was no Bon Jovi, Kenny Loggins, or Madonna. Not since Thriller had there been such a music video production. So this was a dichotomy. It wasn't from a solo singer, band, or group, but from a show? The Broadway musical Phantom of the Opera? The outlandish costume, the looks on the faces of the performers, as if they were all Norma Desmond working on a silent film while being accompanied by an exciting score and pulse-pounding notes along with lyrics that told you something sinister was afoot. Oh, and then the blood. The final coup de grace, perhaps channeling Thriller, this video ends with off-camera violent deaths by the opera chandelier dropping onto the house, an image that would become the show's hallmark moment and calling card, followed by streams of red gore effect running down the lens as Christine's famous high C takes the place of a blood-curdling scream. I know, you want to watch it now, don't you? The lyrics aren't the same, true, but we all know how often rewrites happen in movies and music, so the same goes for theater. Weber is the composer, and toying with this song for years, the words were bound to change to fit the narrative. But this version does its part without complaint, and with all the Gen X musicality we can relate to. Sing once again. 
Phantom was featured in magazine articles and occasional news bits at the time, but there weren't a lot of outlets to get additional information, so it remained a mystery to me for years. Being so young and fed only brief snippets to piece this whole Phantom of the Opera thing together, Broadway the Place was still very much a conundrum to me, both a physical street in New York and yet a conceptual place in the world of live theater. Plays? Musicals? I just didn't comprehend the difference at the time, and whenever I would read more about it, just hearing Broadway's moniker, The Great White Way, made me pause and question, why has it gotta be white? Moving on, Phantom opened in New York in January of 1988. I was fresh in high school and had seen more articles and news events regarding the show's premiere. Was it just a big new play? What was all the fuss? Could this possibly be just some sort of retelling of the same story as the old universal black and white film with that terrifying protagonist, the one whose unmasking scene still makes me feel uneasy? I wanted to know more about it, but it felt so far away, and it was. Even though I had seen this video and had really made me interested in what it was all about, I just didn't get this Broadway thing. And I wouldn't until about 1992, when I did see an Andrew Lloyd Webber musical for the first time on stage. A Broadway tour. Joseph, along with his dream coat and more access to context, as well as people in the know, I would finally learn just how magical a place Broadway could be. And even though not all the Broadway shows are actually on Broadway, spoiler, this metaphysical location, although existing in reality, is also slightly intangible. I know that sounds really philosophical, so you might have to be a theater person to understand. I don't know. The unmistakable music composed by Sir Andrew is known the world over and has warranted some legal trouble along the way. This always recognizable tune has been claimed as plagiarized in a lawsuit by songwriter Ray Rep in 1990, claiming it was the melody of his 1978 song, Till You. And even the great Roger Waters of Pink Floyd has claimed it is the same structure, notes, and even the same time signature as his 1971 song, Echoes. But in Waters' own words, I think that life's too long to bother with suing Andrew fucking Lloyd Webber. Phantom lives on as it was destined to. I have thankfully become very fond of musical theater, a fan of Andrew Lloyd Webber. My favorite is Sunset Boulevard. Not all of his shows are masterpieces. Take the sequel to Phantom, Love Never Dies, or the awesome idea with flawed execution, Starlight Express. With that said, I have to thank an MTV Music video for even pointing me down the path. It was the 1986 airing of the Phantom of the Opera music video that sparked my interest in theater and the Phantom himself. Just getting that hint of disfigured face under that mask made me curiouser and curiouser, as there were no pictures like that published. After finally seeing it, I would not have to wonder anymore. Oh, but this is not the end of the music video story. Only two weeks before the London debut, a second number from the show, All I Ask of You, was released as a single just in time to entice additional would-be theater goers. This ballad between Christine and Raoul is often regarded as one of the biggest and most commercially successful hits from Phantom of the Opera. And in a complete 360 from its music video predecessor, we've got what amounts to a parody of classic movie love scenes. It's like watching Ted and Elaine in Airplane, and I'd be shocked if this didn't hold up some ticket buyers until the reviews were out. Luckily for us American audiences, not only did this not chart in the US, but we were saved from having to witness it on the likes of MTV. All that aside, I've been very lucky to see this twice on Broadway. And now, I say a fond adieu to the theatrical production that has brought so much joy and work to performing artists for 35 years. Let's hope in the case of Phantom Closing, there might be a reprieve and prove once and for all that love indeed never dies. The story has adventure, mystery, horror, and lots of love. Some may even argue that it is the love Christine has for the Phantom that reinvigorated Broadway when it was struggling. Her kiss for the Phantom at the end of the show, like in Sleeping Beauty, is the kiss that awakened Broadway to other generations. However, with its final curtain 35 years later in April of 2023, it should be honored as well as remembered as a complete product of the Gen experience. Perhaps now closed, it will continue to run in our pop culture consciousness for eternity. Thank you for joining me for this incredible show about a Gen X icon you just can't escape. What is your memory of The Phantom? Did you even see this video when it first aired? Tell me about it in the comments. Let's talk about it there. Don't forget to explore the channel for other great shows like this one. And for those who are coming back, I really appreciate it. If you're new to the channel and haven't done so, click that like, hit the subscribe for more exciting shows. Thanks again. And until next time.